It took a long time for a class society of Lithuania to be created, from the beginning of the state until it was finally legalized in the middle of the 14th century. When talking about towns of a class society, it is necessary to distinguish their two shapes or meanings. First, a town was an urbanized space, a relatively densely populated area with a network of streets or plots of land. It usually adjoined the castle or some residence of other public authorities and constituted a single urban complex with it. Not only people belonging to the class of townspeople settled in this space, such as merchants, craftsmen, transport workers and others, but also state officials took up residence there, the gentry, the clergy, and in the large towns, the magnates as well. Another shape of a town was a community of merchants and craftsmen and the territory belonging to them. It is this type of town that we're going to talk about here. If we may say so, we're going to talk about the town of townspeople or the community of townspeople. The first stable concentrations of merchants and craftsmen in Lithuania began to emerge in the 13th century with the formation of the state. In the following century, there were already towns in which craftsmen and merchants permanently lived and worked. This was Kernave, whose merchants were mentioned at the turn of the 13th and in the 14th century, Vilnius, first mentioned in 1323, and Traki. It was not only local people who established themselves in these towns, but also, as was common in the neighboring countries, new arrivals from Russia or German Hansa towns took up residence there. Common affairs urged the townspeople to unite into communities. They had to handle their interrelations, to defend their interests of townspeople when communicating with other classes or public authorities, the Grand Duke or his appointed officials. The ruler was the highest judge of the townspeople. He also took care of management of the urban community, especially taxation, which differed from privileges and taxes imposed on other classes. At first, towns were not singled out from the land, from the rural space where a viceroy appointed by the Grand Duke was in charge of all the gentry and peasants living there. Peculiarities of the economic activity and the urban lifestyle forced the urban life and management to be handled in a different way. Experience of the neighboring countries, such as Poland and the German colonies on the Baltic Sea, was made use of. The self-government of towns came to Lithuania together with Christianity in 1387, in accordance with the so-called German town law, or Magdeburg Rites. In 1387, the ruler granted Vilnius the privilege of self-government. In 1390, Brest was granted this privilege too, and in 1408, Kaunas, and at the beginning of the 15th century, Trake also had it. On the basis of privileges granted by the ruler, self-governing urban communities were established. The land on which they were established went into their possession. They received various economic and tax privileges, and a stable system of taxes and duties paid directly to the state or to the Grand Ducal Treasury was put in place. Urban communities became directly subordinate to the ruler, and the rights of the ruler's viceroy to interfere with the affairs of the towns were greatly restrained. The ruler thus established a peculiar class, self-governing legal administrative districts, consisting exclusively of townspeople, that is Magdeburg type or self-governing towns. Urban communities consisted of personally free merchants, craftsmen, transport workers, people of free professions, such as lawyers, physicians and artists. Their upper stratum was made up of the citizens of the town. They could be the people who were born in legal marriage. They had to have their own business and immovable property, such as houses, in the town, to pay taxes to the town, and together with other townspeople, to the state or to the town owner. Only these people could be members of the town self-government institutions and govern the town. Another urban stratum, the so-called burghers or miestieni, could not govern the town. These people were usually engaged in crafts, provided transportation services, were small traders, sometimes they had their own houses and sometimes they lived on rented residential premises. However, the burghers were members of the community and the town law protected them. Finally, the so-called Ujribe, or outcast people, such as laborers hired for the day, beggars, tramps and the like, lived in the town, and they had to obey the order and law of the town. Townspeople themselves established self-governing institutions of the town. Their system was borrowed from that of German towns. Mostly it spread through intermediaries, that is, through Polish towns, from Magdeburg. The formal head of the town was a prefect appointed by the ruler. However, the true authorities of the town were the council, consisting of the representatives of the town. It was made up of several or a few councillors, 
and from one to four burgomasters. The council, also referred to as the magistrate, handled all the affairs of the town in its relations with its partners outside the town. These included the state, the town owner in the event the town was established on a private holding, also self-government institutions of the nobility, other towns in the country, and abroad. The council was both the legislator of the house rules of the town and the executive power. It had powers of a court as well. The major court of the town was the third self-governing institution. It was a bench court made up of the townspeople themselves. The town council and members of the bench court worked in the town hall. The town hall, the coat of arms and the flag of the town were regarded as symbols of freedom of the town. Town halls were usually the largest and smartest buildings in the town. This is testified to by the existing town halls of Vilnius and Kolnus. Only the church could compete with them in the self-governing town. Another important thing was that quite often, castles or palaces of the rulers or magnates stood next to the town or even were inserted in its territory. Usually an attempt was made to limit the territory of the town by a town wall. However, Vilnius is perhaps the only town in Lithuania that has had a town wall since the beginning of the 16th century. Throughout the 15th century, the wealthiest families of townspeople, most often those of merchants which trace their origin to the first townspeople, to the creators of urban communities, were concentrated in Vilnius and Kolnus. Members of these families who called themselves patricians met in conferences at the council, at the bench court, and chose new members from among themselves. In the long run, with the growth of towns, new families of wealthy merchants emerged. However, they were not allowed to enter the town authorities, and they were called plebeians. This could not last for a long time. In the third and fourth decades of the 16th century, both in Vilnius and Konas, the patricians had to make every effort to admit those wealthy and attractive merchants called plebeians to self-governing institutions. All citizens of the town started electing another self-government institution, the jury of the community. It was granted the right to control the activities of the council. In this way, the self-government of towns became somewhat more democratic. In small towns, such as Kedanya and Yonishkis, the meeting of all the heads of the families of the townspeople became engaged in handling the affairs of the town. An even larger number of townspeople were able to take part in the governance of towns after the wars that were fought in the middle of the 17th century, when towns suffered greatly and became weak. Then the council, members of the bench court, the jury of the community, began to meet in conference and solve the affairs of the town altogether. Their powers were different, but the active participation of the representatives of the community had an impact on the activity of the council. Vilnius, Kaunas and Trake enjoyed the self-government after they were granted privileges. Magdeburg rights spread slowly in Lithuanian towns. Most towns, or small towns, were directly dependent on the administrative territorial formation in which that town was situated, the viceroy appointed by the ruler, or if the town was located in a private holding, on its owner. More self-governments of these towns emerged at the turn of the 15th-16th centuries, when privileges were granted to the large towns of Russian lands of the Lithuanian state, Kiev, Polotsk, Minsk and others. Then Grodno and Veluana, situated on the border of the Lithuanian lands, were also granted the privilege of self-government. The network of self-governing towns began to expand more rapidly in the second half of the 16th century. In the long run, the number of such towns in the Lithuanian state totaled more than a hundred. Among them, the towns that enjoyed the rights inherent in Magdeburg law on the Lithuanian lands were Merkine, Alitus, Lida, Lesdie, Yoniškis, Jurborkas, Naumistis, Vladislav, Vistitis, Verbalis and others. Private towns were the ones located in the holdings of the Radvelos family, Birže, Kedaini, as well as Nesvijus and Slutsk. Other such towns were Skodas and Kretinga, which were established by the Hotkavici family and were later handed over to the Sapiegas family. Verne belonged to the bishops of Jamaitia. By their size they could not be compared with Vilnius, Kaunas or Grodno, and their self-governments had their own peculiarities. However, the residents were personally free and owned their property. Not all classes were subordinate to self-governing institutions of the town. People of other classes, first of all the gentry, did not become townspeople and were not subordinate to self-government institutions of the town. Certain territories which did not belong to the urban community and were not part of the town in terms of class existed in almost every town. These were castles of the ruler or the magnates, churches and monasteries. 
Finally, in terms of class, numerous Jews were not townspeople either in the 17th and 18th centuries. There were territories called Yurisdikos in both small and large towns. They were especially obvious in Vilnius. The community of the town of Vilnius, Vilnius castles which belonged to the ruler, the Yurisdika of the bishop and the chapel, as well Archimandrate of Orthodox believers, the Jewish Kehal, all had their administrations there and paid taxes independently of one another. This self-government of towns, with small changes and differences, existed in Lithuania until the reforms carried out at the beginning of the 18th century, when the Parliament of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth proclaimed the new law on towns on the 18th of April, 1791. As a result of that law, Yurisdikos were abolished. After that, all the people residing in the territory of the town had to swear to the town and to become townspeople. The gentry did not lose nobility because of that. All the Yurisdikos became subordinate to the self-government institutions of the town. Residents of the town of all the classes found themselves under the dominion of public authorities. Class-based self-government of towns was gradually turning into the territorial type of government. The great novelty was the fact that urban rights were practically granted to all the townspeople who wanted them. Until May 1792, as long as that law was in effect, the rulers declared 74 self-government privileges, and several more towns either organized self-government by themselves or tried to receive privileges. Unfortunately, not every town managed to receive these privileges because the opponents of the four-year diet which announced them and the invasion of the Russian army invited by them put a stop to these reforms. Active participation of the townspeople of Lithuania in the uprising of 1794 testifies to the fact that Lithuanian towns, both old and new ones, which had just received self-government, wanted to manage their life independently and were prepared to do that. The residents of Vilnius and other townspeople organized military troops. The representatives were among the leaders of the uprising. However, the uprising was suppressed. The Russians came to power, which, among other things, restructured urban life in a very peculiar way.